earlier, um, a few years prior um, to that um, point in time, uh, I believe it was in 92, um, we started, I, I actually ended up spending a lot of time in Japan. Um, and I was trying to figure out why the second largest economy in the world wasn't um, buying the second most, um, you know, second largest amount of product from us because, you know, Japan, home of technology, uh, big economy, you know, that sort of thing. So I spent some time in Japan and come to find out that um, for a country that was selling a lot of technology, they weren't using it very well. Um, at that point in time, in the early 90s, the networking was literally sneaker net. You know, the, the, you know an employee would stick a, a disk in the drive and copy the data off and walk down the hallway uh, to, you know, go to EWOW and you hand it to EWOW and EWOW would stick it in and, you know, that's, that's how, they, how they did networking. So it became obvious to me that they had no real reason, no real driver to have uh, network connectivity because culturally that face-to-face -face interaction was important uh, in Japan, much more so than uh, in other countries in the world. And so uh, and when I dug around some more, I found that there was no commercial internet uh, in existence in, in Japan. So I uh, came back from that trip, I met with Bill Schrader, uh, Marty Schofstall, PSI Net, and suggested to them that they uh, come over and open up the, the internet in uh, Japan, bring commercial internet to, to uh, Japan. Um, and literally, they both laughed at me and said, you know, that, that'll never happen, that it'll happen over in Europe first, uh, and that their focus was on Europe. And I thought about that for a while and said, well, um, I need uh, to sell more in Japan. So the only way to sell more in Japan is to build more roads. And if I had to go build roads myself, then I guess that's what it was. So I asked if they would land our traffic from Japan uh, in their, you know, in, you know, with connection with them. So it was a, a backbone agreement. Um, they agreed. Uh, I went off, uh, spent the next uh, six months on and off in Japan lining up uh, uh, partners and uh, ended up bringing AT&T Gens on board and those folks uh, and we landed the first uh, uh, commercial uh, T1 uh, for the internet um, across the Pacific, landed it in San Jose um, and uh, sent the first, uh, first bit of traffic um, over that one, one evening. And uh, so that, uh, that company, IIKK or Intercon International KK, uh, became the first uh, commercial uh, ISP in Japan. And you grew that for a few months, and it started to get traction. And yeah, well, we, uh, you know, we were a software company, and we're used to uh, big margins and not having to deal with a lot of capital outlays. So, um, at the time, our buddies uh, at PSI now um, woke up to the fact that we'd actually been successful in getting all the licensing issues and getting everything set up, and actually starting to get customers in uh, in Japan. Uh, and they made a, a, an offer for uh, that piece of the company or that um, company from uh, Intercon, and so we sold that to PSINet. Uh, and that became uh, their first, PSINet's first international acquisition. It also became, uh, eventually, uh, as the core, but became the second largest um, ISP in, in uh, Asia. 